Yes, you're still watching 120 Minutes Part 2 now for more parts to come, but this part is entirely dedicated to the B-52s, those interplanetarian rockers, pop rockers from Athens in Georgia, not Greece. They don't have a clue where that name comes from, by the way. But we'll talk about that later, because we have an interview, of course, with Kate Pearson and Keith Strickland, because the B-52s are back with a new LP. Yes, it's called Cosmic Thing, produced by Don Was and uh, Niall Rogers. Niall Rogers. And it has been silent for about three years now. And, of course, there was the news of the tragic loss of founder member Ricky Wilson. But still, the B-52s are unique. And uh, they're still doing the same thing, but they're very unique at doing that. And they still capture the, the fun and, and the specificness of the space Age the best. So I asked Kate Pearson and Keith Strickland what their clearest memories of the early days of Space Age are. I remember being on an island, Vashon Island, off the um, coast of Washington State, and there was a um, sort of a hippie guy there with a TV outside, hooked up outside, and he was on LSD, and we were watching the moonwalk, the <laughs> first man on the moon. <laughs> Jesus. That was a vivid memory, because it was outside and there was this TV in the middle of a field. Uh-huh. What did he think of it? Did he believe it when he saw it? No. No? I had a neighbor when I lived in Georgia, too, that said it was all a hoax. Yeah. <clears throat> he truly believed that it was just a set-up publicity stunt. Yes, a very good clip. Rock Lobster, the very first single from the B-52s, released in the summer of 1978. But the world hit eight years later in 1986. Although it seems that the B-52s are strictly a party band, it's not true. They have a brain too, you know, and they're using it. On Channel Z, for example, which is the single that was released first from the album Cosmic Thing, they're tackling the state of planet Earth and they're showing themselves very green. Are they Martians after all? Or what are they trying to put across? Well, consciousness raising and benefits and learning a lot ourselves on the way of doing it. We've done some work with uh, people for the ethical treatment of animals, PETA, mm -hmm. PETA, and we learned a lot about animal torture while <laughs> working with them. Mm -hmm. they, they're basically an animal rights group, and there are a lot of things I didn't realize, uh, using cruelty-free cosmetics and the possibility of boycotting certain companies and putting pressure. They've had a lot of success. I think yeah. you just have to work on a small level, people doing whatever they feel they can do on their own yeah. terms. You can't think you have to change the world or change everything all at once, because then you just get overwhelmed. Yeah. So Channel Z is a lot about that, just kind of feeling it positive. And the band is very much towards having a positive attitude so we can, you know, make things change. But you yeah. have to party and have fun, too. Oh, sorry. Oh, my God! It keeps falling off. B-52 lyrics, they are very funny. They read like a comic book with a hidden message, though. Now take this, the title track, Cosmic Thing. In that one, they sing, shake it till the butter melts, till the butter melts. Next line is, don't let it rest on the president's desk. Rock the house. Is that the White House? I mean, how do they come up with this nonsensical sense? It does just happen mm -hmm. you know, when we're jamming, when we're writing. These phrases come out, we just incorporate them. Yes, sort of. It's just us. <laughs> so we write very stream of conscious. And we just let the door to that collective unconscious open, and we all start jamming, and we mm -hmm. bounce off each other a lot. And Fred will say things, Cindy and I will be saying different things, yep. singing. Keith does all the instrumentation, and then he jams over that, and the guitar or whatever yep. uh, instrument you might pick up. And then Cindy and Fred and I jam on lyrics and vocals and harmonies. And Keith writes some lyrics as well. So we all have our hands on it. So a lot of times we'll just hear a phrase. Or sometimes we won't even hear what the other person's saying. And we'll just, we'll just hear one word and we'll start rolling on that topic. But those phrases aren't inconsistent because you just have to shake the lead out to get things done. You know, don't mm -hmm. let it rest on the president's desk. Rock the house. That's... Yeah. what it's all about. Uh -huh. It's a very good new single from the B-52's Love Shack, shot at a discotheque called Chaque d'Amour, a French word game there. And that discotheque might uh, be near Athens, which was the ex, which is the ex-hometown of the B-52's. Not Athens in Greece, no, in Georgia, in the southern part of the USA. Kate and Keith of the B-52's now live in Woodstock, of all places, in the state of New York. Athens is also the hometown of R.E.M. Do the B-52's often go back? I love going back to Athens. Fred and I went down there the last year, or less than a year ago, to host a party for Danny Beard, who's, who put out our first single on his mm -hmm. TV records. 
And it was so much fun. It's always a great time going back there. It's, there's a lot of bands there and a lot of friends, and there's room to party on people's porches. And really, mm -hmm. when we were at Deadbeat Club, it was very much about living in Athens and kind of being able to go skinny dipping and ride your bicycle over to someone's house and just hang out on the porch. Yeah. And you don't really... New York isn't a place where you can hang out that much on the street, you know? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're constantly look over your shoulder. But Keith and I live in Woodstock now, too. You know? I live in both places, but Keith lives in Woodstock. You know? Yeah. So it's really beautiful there. It's kind of hard to leave. Yeah. What's the history of the name of the town? Because Athens is, of course, the capital city of Greece. Were there some Greek people who settled themselves there and just used the name of good old Athens in Greece? It was, it's a college town, so uh -huh. I think it's, it has something to do with the school. I think it's the first university. Center of learning. Isn't that I mean, the first university in, in the world? <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's one of the first American universities in the world. Probably. So the university was it's there before the city has a name? the first one in Georgia. Yeah. Sure, it's not the first one in... Cosmic, Cosmic Thing, the new LP, closes with a very melancholic, warm-hearted instrumental track called Follow Your Bliss. Bliss means perfect happiness. Is this uh, the B-52's philosophy of life? It's sort of, um, if you feel different, it's okay. You know, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Be yourself, L live your life in a way that's true to yourself. I think that's what we're about, that's what we've communicated. Um, Not in a heavy-handed way, but just in being yeah. ourselves on stage. We sort of represent unity and diversity. <laughs> we sort of all wear whatever we want to wear each night. It doesn't matter. You know, we all do that. We get a lot of letters from people saying that they felt like outsiders. I think we definitely appeal, especially when we first started, to people who felt like super freaks in high school and uh -huh. people that felt like outsiders. You know, they were attracted to us because we represented them. Freaky side. <laughs> But do you feel like outsiders? In the way we dress, or just freedom, yeah. just being able to be yourself. Yeah. Do, do, do you feel like outsiders? No, not really. No. No. But I think we just do that, what Keith said, you know, to kind of be yourself. And even if other people don't agree, or if it's not the trendy thing to do, if you don't feel cool, I mean, it's not about being cool or trying to dress and act in a certain way. You just mm -hmm. follow your own thing. Okay, try to do that. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks. <laughs>